and then next Saturday um, flying to a game which I was just in awe about. I was just like, what the hell's happening? There were times with Guernsey, you'd go away, away from home and you'd be aiming to like keep a clean sheet and just maybe get a point, scrap a point. Whereas I'm sure you're aware of this with Jersey Bulls, it's completely different. You're going away, if you don't win 3-4-0 then you're kind of questioning why, like what's the point? I've never known a finisher like him and I've played that. Bristol City youth set up and play that in like Bristol counties. I've never seen a finisher like him. I think he was training with us when he was like 15, 16, and amazing player. But to see where he's come, where he's like going to now, and yeah. he's at Bristol City and his, the world's, the football world's his oyster. Like, you could, well, yeah, there's talks of the Premier League clubs coming in. Yeah, especially when you see all the like fans and how much, it, yeah, and how well they treat it. and. The training programme that goes up to it, I was just in shock because um, obviously coming from the UK you never really have games like that. And I just think of all the hard work that the team's been through and Gary and the assistants, then it'd be great to get promoted. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Sportscast Jersey. Today we are joined by Jersey Bulls star and all-round sportsman Frank Tobin. How are you doing today, Frank? Yeah, good, thank you. Looking forward to it. Good, uh, good. Be good. Yeah, good it's stuff. been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. It's good to get you on. Um, first question, as always, for me. Um, have you always been sporty since a young age growing up? Yeah, pretty much. Um, kind of came from my parents, but um, any sport, anything that's kept me kind of active, I've really enjoyed. Um, when I was young, like really young, swimming. And then just as I got older, stopped swimming and got into like football, rugby, cricket, and all those kind of sports. And then whatever sport I excelled at, that's kind of the sport that I took forward. Yeah. Uh, football being that, athletics being the other. So, um, yeah, I've loved it. Um, sport's a great way of meeting. Like I've met some of my best friends through sport. And it's just a great way of competition. And you might have known my older brother, Harry, who also played for Guernsey, but unfortunately he left to go to London. But um, just having an older brother, you just get so competitive. Everything you're just doing to win against him. And yeah. it is great fun. And from going, and then especially because me and him played football, that's kind of where we buzzed off each other and yeah, yeah we, did quite, we did quite well, especially in Bristol. Who's the better footballer? Oh, you'll have to ask him. He's the older man. But um, <laughs> we're, we're both, it's weird because we're both so different. Um, he's probably the fittest person I haven't, I've never known. Like he runs like 16, 17 minute 5Ks and he can ping a ball far, but he's not the quickest. He play, It's weird because he'll play left back as well and I'll play right back and yeah. It was quite funny when we were both playing together. But, um, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely. a good question. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. After um, ask Tony uh, Blitz, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, moving on to who, who kind of were your, I guess, footballing or sporting idols growing up? Who did you watch on the TV and be like, I want to play like him or uh, I, like, I like watching him weekly? Ooh, um... Good question. Uh, I'd say um, it was quite weird because everyone used to call me like Frank Lampard just because of the name. Um, <laughs> uh, so I liked watching him and I don't know why, but I always used to sometimes, I used to like watching Chelsea. I think it was just because they kept winning everything when I was like quite young. Yeah. So watching some of them players play. And then in terms of like athletics, I really loved the Brownlee brothers. I think they've inspired so many people in terms of like athletics triathlons and just coming from the brother background I think they're just amazing and you might have seen the run when I think one of the brothers was winning and he stopped to let the brother I think either beat him or just they went they crossed the line together yeah. I can't remember what event it might it wasn't the Olympics but it was one of the World Series events yeah um, but I think they're so inspiring um, yeah so yeah yeah those guys 
Yeah, definitely. And I, I've been lucky enough to meet both them and interview Johnny when they came over for Super League and just to see really them. Nice. Yeah, they were nice people and um, yeah, just just class. All the triathletes were. And it's a shame that, that that stopped over here now. Um, they stopped coming Super League and because that was such a great event. Um, I want to move on to when you moved to Guernsey and um, Guernsey FC. Do you remember maybe your first training session, then maybe your debut? And how how was that moving into the club? Yeah, so I um, moved. Uh, so my mum worked in Guernsey, and then that's kind of how me and my brother went across. Uh, loved it. I love being by the coast and everything that that offers, just from like messing around in the way, like surfing and going on boats, etc., like that. And some of my best mates I've met just from stuff like that. So I've loved it. And then I, I'll be honest, I moved to Guernsey. I had no idea about the football team. No idea they had a football team. Uh, my intention was just to get qualified with PwC. And then I've moved to the island and Harry started playing for Guernsey FC and said, oh, Frank, come along to training. I think you'll like fit in well. Everyone will like you. And then first training session went well. And because they've got a link with Bristol City, I've always found there was that kind of like chemistry, I guess, because Harry, I've never been like a biggest football fan in terms of like watching football, but Harry would love Bristol City and there was always that connection with Tony. Um, yeah. So that was good. And then, yeah, I just remember him, I was on the first training session signing a four and then next Saturday um, flying to a game, which I was just in awe about. I was just like, what the hell's happening? Yeah. We're flying to a game. And this was, I can't help remember how old I was, maybe like 20, 21. Um, but I was just in shock and then, yeah, playing the game. And it was good. I think he put me in centre back. We played like a back three. Yeah. Get away to Ashford, who they're doing quite well now. I think they're in like the Isme and Prem. Yeah. Yeah. And how it's just, it? yeah, how? it's surreal playing alongside your brother. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I wanted to touch on the travelling. Obviously, you're still doing it with balls, which we'll touch on a bit later. But the travelling side of things, how much do you enjoy that side of things to get to games? <laughs> the first year, I'm not going to lie, I buzzed, like it was a buzz. Yeah. Uh, getting on the flight, you're wearing your kit, everyone's, you get so many questions like, oh, where are you off to? What football team are you? And especially all my friends from Bristol, when I was, I think I might have posted it on my Instagram story or posted it somewhere. They're just, everyone's like, what the hell? What are you doing? So that was fun. Not going to lie, five, six years on, because you've got to remember, before Jersey Bulls was started, I was travelling with Guernsey, so. Yeah. It, I must admit, now it is you're you're thinking, oh shit, another away game. Um, yeah. Another seven hours flying there and back playing a game. But one, the like I, I don't even like come across like saying anything controversial. There were times with Guernsey, you'd go away away from home, and you'd be aiming to like keep a clean sheet, and just maybe get a point, scrap a point. Whereas I'm sure you're aware of this with Jersey Bulls, it's completely different. You're going away. If you don't win three, four nil, then you're kind of questioning why, like, what's the point? Yeah. So I'm not going to, like, it's a lot better. It's it's obviously a lot more fun when you win away from home and especially going, because not all the places are as nice. But I remember, yeah. especially in the Channel Islands, we're quite lucky to play at good sporting events, uh, sporting, like, grounds. Yeah. Um, I won't name any places, but I'm sure you're aware, like, you'll go to these places in London and you just, you're like, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um. You touched on playing with your brother there. Was that kind of, obviously you had good moments with Guernsey, but was that kind of a highlight of playing over in Guernsey and uh, following your brother's footsteps, kind of? Yeah, kind of. Um, he would like it if I say I'm following his footsteps. But, um, <laughs> yeah, just because especially when my mum was working in Guernsey, uh, it was, it's obviously, because my parents, uh, they, they'll, they'll watch me, but you got to remember for them, I'm not always with them. So them, them seeing me and my brother play and then them seeing me in person, it's quite, it doesn't happen often. Yeah. Um, so it, it would be great when my parents or my grandparents would come and watch me in person or my grand, or yeah. Um, yeah. It was even spe more special if both of us were playing. Yeah, definitely. Nine times out of 10, me and him would be starting at like 
in defence. So it was, yeah, it was always a great buzz. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I, like, I can't fault it. Harry was the one that introduced me to um, getting into like Guernsey FC because I had no idea about the club or yeah, anything about that. Yeah, definitely. Who, who were kind of your standout players when you played for them and who, who kind of like stood out as the key players and your favourites uh, to play with as well? I think the thing is, I think everyone in Jersey knows like Ross Allen, like, yeah. uh, and I think everyone in Guernsey would admit it, like when you're playing a game and if it's nil-nil, then you've still got a chance and I think we'll all admit it when you're playing a game and you've got him up top. There's times when you just launch it forward and you just you're just like right, Ross, do your magic. And I've never known a finisher like him. And I've played at Bristol City Youth set up and played that in like Bristol Counties. I've never seen a finisher like him. And even like when you're in training, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but he's like known for like a famous chop. So he's probably done it in varieties. I don't know. But yeah. um, he'll run along down the line and then just chop in and then pull it into the top corner with his other foot. And even in training, you're thinking, I know what he's going to do. But there's been times when he's put me on my ass and you're just there laughing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, it, it would have to be him because the amount of away games when you're there just trying to get a draw or you're, you're one nil down or it's nil nil and you're just, you're, you boot the ball up to him and he'll score a goal. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good, yeah, it's a good uh, feeling. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Even in this year's Marassi, he, he, he it was unlucky. He was, I think he knew he was offside, but even the finish in the last kick of the game to and finish like that. Is, I, don't know, I don't know his actual age. Um, yeah. Because he is a lot older than me. But you think when he was in his prime, maybe when I first moved to Guernsey, and that's kind of him in his prime. Yeah. And like it's scary what he was capable of. You should try and get him on here. Probably he'll have some good stories, especially when he went across to New Zealand. Cause yeah. I think for one or two years I didn't play with him because he was in New Zealand playing for I think Wellington. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm sure my brother would say Harry would say exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, um, unbelievable. There. Did you play with um, uh, Alex Scott um, when when he was at Guernsey? Yeah. So when I was yeah, so he got released from Southampton, and then he uh, came to Guernsey and uh, well, obviously moved back to Guernsey and then was just training. Um, yeah. It's quite funny, he made his debut. So he came on for my brother uh, in one of the games away from London. But um, it's exceptional what he's done. Um, I just can't believe it because he was, I think he was training with us when he was like 15, 16, and amazing player. But to see where he's come, where he's like going to now, and yeah. he's at Bristol City and his, the world's, the football world's his oyster. Like he could, well, yeah, there's talks of the Premier League clubs coming in, I think. I'm chatting to a friend that knows him well and like Tottenham, Wolves, all these teams and you're hearing regions, of, uh, you're hearing prices of like 20 mil. Yeah. I remember when he was training for us, he was like, he'll admit this, he was like a stick. He was just quite skinny, technically amazing. But you're thinking, oh, when he plays against these adults, you'll just be like, mm, might get yeah. like, punched off the ball or he might struggle. But it just shows that like, when you join a professional setup, they obviously put you through these training programs, but I'm sure put a lot of weight on, but like good weight. And I think I saw um, uh, Sammy uh, yesterday or the other day, and I was just asking when you're off to Swansea. Yeah. I said, mate, you just got to take everything, like even if the, all the advice they give you, even if you don't think you're playing well, just keep talking to them, asking what you can improve on. And when they're in the gym, just like just learn everything you can because it would be amazing what can happen to you. And, even yeah. if it doesn't, the first few weeks or months aren't the best, you may be on the bench or something, just keep absorbing much and just be a sponge. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, um, definitely. Um, moving on a little bit, uh, Muratis, uh, you've played a few. Um, just explain those days and from the build-up to the... As, as a non-Channel Islander as well, from someone who moved from England, how fast did it did you learn about how big a game it was? Uh, like probably my first one. Um, yeah, especially when you see all the like fans and how much, yeah, and how well they treat it. And 
the training program that goes up to it. I was just in shock because obviously coming from the UK, you never really have games like that. Yeah. And then some of the abuse, I've had abuse from both sides now, which <laughs> is quite funny, but I just laugh at it. It just, it makes me laugh. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's amazing. And they're always very tight games. You never really get, especially all the ones I've been involved in, you never get like a, I think the one I was at, uh, 0-0, went to pens, yeah. one nil uh, on a penalty shoot, uh, on like a pen. Yeah. So yeah, they've all been incredibly tight. And uh, you, I, I, well, I just don't think you'll ever get like a free, well, from what I've seen, it would never be like, they're qu never quite expansive. All the training sessions I've been involved in and like leading up to it, it's all very tight, as a, especially as like a fullback and defender. You get the ball first option, kind of like yeah. clear your, uh, clear it from your area, I guess. Yeah. Nothing too risky, but uh, yeah. they are amazing games and I think they should be treasured and especially as in the Channel Islands, it's amazing. It would just be good for um, Jersey, I think. With Guernsey, you see all the fans around and it would be good if Jersey started developing that. And yeah. You can definitely see a bit more of a buzz in Guernsey regarding the Marathi, whereas in Jersey, it's just still not, I'm not sure what the word would be, maybe taking off or it, it just, I'm not sure if you can, you feel the same, but something just needs to click with. Yeah, yeah. But then I guess you got the rugby here, so maybe that's one. Yeah, for for the actual Bulls, I think, I don't know, I think more needs to be done so that the Reds and the Bulls don't clash and other games don't clash. So, I don't know, something needs to be done, like you said, to make sure that you kind of get the, the crowds that you deserve. Um. Going back to the Marathi for one more question. In the yeah. changing room, how, what's the atmosphere like before a game? Is is there any other game like it? Is it tense? Is it excitement? Uh, I've had someone cry to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I won't, yeah, there's no point naming, but uh, I've had someone, well, like their team talk was them just like fully going at it. And the passion was just, crazy um and you have signs all around the change rooms just like motivational quotes everyone says their bit and then you just i guess you've got to get on with it really um yeah and then you do the whole like presentation at the start and it is it is obviously different to a normal game because you'll get to the get game like probably like three hours before you have a big meal um you won't be wearing your tracks you might be wearing like a suit kind of thing so all those things do change. I personally take it, I kind of just focus it on just as a normal game. Because yeah. I think if you get, I've when you play in these big games, if you start thinking that's a massive game and everything depends on it, you just get so nervous and you just get so wild up and like you just, you don't do your normal things. Yeah. And you just forget everything and it, the game will go by in like 10 minutes and you'll just, you'll forget everything. If you yeah. just treat it as your normal game, it will, you just get into your usual rhythm and then off you go. Yeah, definitely. Would you ever want to play in the red of Jersey in the game? Yeah, well, it's, 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 uh, I've noticed in Jersey, the kind of balls and the Marathis are kind of like different setups. Mm. So in Guernsey, I'm sure you're aware, but like Tony would do it. It was all kind of like one team. Yeah. Um, so in Jersey, it's a bit different. And, um, yeah, I had a good chat with, uh, Cassidy, who obviously left after, but um, I didn't, obviously we didn't, he didn't really know me, didn't work, we didn't really work together. We had, I think, two training sessions together. Yeah. Um, and you got to remember, he's probably had his back four for the last three, four years. And I think the last three, four years have been all red. Yeah. With Jersey apart, obviously I know COVID affected some stuff. So it's been incredibly successful and like, you, you can't, you, you can't really change a winning team, can you? Yeah, yeah, especially, and I think every game we've it's been quite dominating from in terms of like what Jersey have done. So you can't follow him and train. When I was at training, it's so intense. Everyone is like bopping balls around. It's 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 great. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, let's talk about moving to Jersey and obviously Jersey Bulls. Um, signing for them and playing for them. How was that transition? And did you get messages from? Guernsey about it and yeah, so 
um, it was probably all my a lot of my like good friends were leaving Guernsey, so it was probably time to leave Guernsey as well. Thought about going to London, but Jersey was on the cards because of my girlfriend and just work opportunities with PwC. Uh, not many people know this, but I, as I was in Jersey, I was still playing for Guernsey, flying across, and then uh, I met Gary at the airport in my Guernsey tracksuit while he had his Jersey tracksuit on, so that was quite funny. Uh, we exchanged numbers, started chatting, spoke to Tony, just saying, I tried like, being open as I can, just saying, look, it's quite hard for me to keep traveling and doing this. And they were expensing a lot of it, but I can imagine just playing away game, each away game, each Saturday was an away game for me. Yeah. So it was quite hard. And then spoke to Gary. And then after that call with Gary, I think things changed. And I was like, it's probably time to make the move. Um, a lot of the messages were very nice. Obviously, I had some bad ones. Um, a lot of the people, I think a lot of people my age kind of accepted it and kind of knew my intentions. And at the end of the day, football's football. You just want to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Play. And so, yeah, I did have nice messages, but you, yeah, I did have a couple of bad ones. But like I said, just got to laugh them off and it's what it is. But yeah. Uh, and then the movie signing for Jersey was great. Uh, everyone was very friendly. Um, I think I like my first game was in February. It was quite hard though because I'm not sure if you remember last year. Uh, we just we didn't have that. I don't know something. We had a couple of like injuries, and then we we had I'm not sure if you remember we had like a backlog of away games and we were playing some of our home games away. Yeah. And I don't know. It was just we weren't able to train. I think Springfield was having some work done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So like, I don't know, they're just, we got into kind of like a rhythm of, we weren't just getting good, the results were drying up and we had quite a few draws and then we were chasing the team, the two teams above us and it just wasn't working. And then for me, like I wasn't able to train and it was just, you're going from week in to week out to a game. I personally, at then I, I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't enjoying the football I was playing, how I was playing. I didn't feel fit. So I just remember going away in summer um, and just making sure I, I think I did like five Ks every day, um, did loads of sprinting. So I'm, uh, got myself in like a proper gym routine message, uh, spoke to Gary in the summer, just saying, Oh, I get like, wasn't too happy with what happened last year in terms of my own performance. Um, buzzing to have like a proper preseason with you and then go from there. And then this, this season we've just come out of, I think it's been great. Um, obviously didn't get promotion. <laughs> Uh, very close to promotion, I guess. A um, few things didn't work out. Um, obviously, I think a big miss was like soul leaving because obviously he's our goal. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is, especially for some of those London clubs signing. You see some of the wages they're on. But I, you can't fault it. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the season. Um, yeah. How much do you enjoy playing? in Jersey as well and at Springfield is is that an enjoyable experience for you? Uh, ground's amazing hate AstroTurf uh, <laughs> I actually hate the AstroTurf I'm not sure about you or other players I'm not sure what you've heard but yeah. I can't stand it um, one you can't beat grass and I know revenue people they sell the ground they sell Springfield to other schools and stuff which at the end of the day that's what you need um, but I think what I'm not sure if you know, but have you heard of all the ACLs that's happened in the team? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since yeah. I've been at Jersey Bulls, I think there's been three ACLs. Yeah. Before that, I've never, I never really knew of someone that had an ACL. Or, so that's, I'm not sure if it's scary or I don't know, worrying. I'm not sure, but I just hope it doesn't one happen to like the team and me and myself. It's just really bad. And yeah. um, I don't know. I'm just. I, because of the type of player I am, I'm not sure if you've seen me, I'm always trying to run up and down the wing and I love just like going into tackles and my burn, the burns I get, the rashes are just horrendous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's not good. But no, no. In terms, of, in terms of like the stadium and the setup, I think it's great. You've got the bar upstairs and the calf downstairs and yeah, I do think it's a good setup. It's just a shame about the AstroTurf person. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, a few people have said that. Um, yeah. Players-wise, obviously you mentioned Sammy, but there's a lot of youth. It's a good mix of youth and experience in the Bulls team at the moment. Um, yes, it's, it's, it's the, 
honestly, the team's great. Um, when I first joined, it was it was just quite difficult with not training and stuff. But this year, especially the season that's just gone, it's been great. Um, I've met some amazing friends. Like, I guess like I go to the gym with them. I like go on runs with some of them. Uh, some of the socials we've been have been great. Like been to London. Uh, I think we had like a, a golf trip the other day. Uh, playing, I played paddle with uh, Luke Watson and Jay Giles quite a bit. So like, yeah, I've made some amazing friends now and it's great. And I must admit the quality is amazing. Some of the players that I've seen, like, especially Miguel, Sammy, like some of them you can't get the ball off and you just, you end up just having to use your ex experience and your, stri your natural, like bigger presence to get the ball off them. So I imagine those two would do amazing things. And obviously Sol's gone off to do his own thing in um, the UK. And yeah, he's another great player. So yeah, this, like the standard of trade, especially the training standard is just amazing compared to what, because in Guernsey, you've got to remember we were playing on grass and not always you had like 16 players. Sometimes you'd have maybe like 10. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've seen training, but you'll get like 20 plus players down there. Yeah. And that's what's good about playing and because you're always looking over your shoulder because um jj lloyd another great player and he's obviously fighting for my position and you just you always got to put in 100 percent. and then you have got like other like sammy sutcliffe yeah. an amazing player and i think every time i play with him and you're just like i won't swear but he's just like shit you know, he's he's amazing he's got everything he's like six foot four technically amazing he's just he just needs his time. I guess he'll get more experienced. And obviously when you're competing against like Luke Campbell yeah. and James Perry, it's going to be quite difficult, but um, yeah, it's time to come. So competition is great. And some of the players are very good. Definitely. Um, how do you compare both the two clubs and maybe the two managers that you've played under at both clubs? Uh both very good managers, uh, both incredibly friendly and make you feel very welcoming. Uh, Tony's very, very tactical, just in some of the stuff he'll, he'll spend like a whole session on just, I think we did like throw-ins at one, we did like throw-ins for like two weeks. Uh, then we did like patterns of play for two weeks. But then with Gary, we'll do like keep ball and we'll do certain drills of like keeping the ball in the opposition's like final third so stuff like that they're both very similar both very good um yeah so yeah can't really say very good definitely definitely um want to move on just conscious of time as well um moving sports a bit well it's a different sports you do different sports you you've run marathon here you don't <laughs> run here um how much do you enjoy these endurance sports and these those type of sports as well? Yeah, anything that pushes myself. Um, I'll always remember just training for balls on a Tuesday night in uh, September and then Dan coming up to me, the assistant coach, just being like, Frank, I pulled out of the marathon. I think you'll be able to do it. And I was like, uh, I thought about it for like five seconds. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? didn't train, did it on the weekend. And I think I remember seeing you there, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just love anything that pushes myself. Um, then I'll do it, I'll be honest. Um, athletics, I've always been okay at athletics, especially sprinting. So for Guernsey, I was close to going to the Island Games for sprinting. Yeah. Obviously, Jersey's a bit different because the population's a lot bigger and I'm, I won't be in like the top five or top 10, whatever. So I've always been kind of okay at running. Uh, and then the triathlon, I thought the triathlon was going okay until this weekend and the, I almost didn't finish. I almost got like, I had to pull out just because of the cramp on the final run. Yeah. Uh, I think the swimming, I came out like middle of the pack and then the cycle was good. But the cramp I had on the triathlon was just horrendous. <laughs> I, mean, I do think, because obviously with football, you just your knees and your ankles, you're always like having to look after them. But I do think once my legs, I just feel them start going with football. I would love to do like triathlons properly. And you see some, I'm not sure if you saw some of the bikes down there, just they're probably like 10, 20K, I don't know. 
and it'd be good just to get in a nice bike and just see how it goes and yeah yeah how, how what's your favorite out of the, dis- the disciplines and what one was the most chal- obviously you say about the running but what one's the most challenging for you uh ch- see i love swimming and people will always say swim so i'm not like i'm not sure about yourself i know you you run and stuff but people yeah. don't do triathlons because of the swim part and the sea swim and i've always been okay with that so i'd say swimming i would say is good before this weekend if you asked me this question a week ago i'd say running <laughs> i think i did a i don't even want to i haven't even looked at my time my splits because for the run i think i stopped for like four minutes and I think my five uh, 5k time was just very slow. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, cycling I can improve on. Um, it just requires time. Yeah. So yeah, I'd put swimming and running as like my good ones. It's just running after doing all that, all after the swim and the long cycle is just never going to be fun. Yeah. Definitely. You just get too much lactic acid and you're just having so many gels and it just doesn't. You're in a yeah, it's not good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, final kind of question. What's next for you in terms of sport? Obviously, you want to play as long as you can. What are the goals with Bulls next season? Um, I've kind of always said to myself, I'd love to get promoted with the Bulls. I think the league we're in is very difficult to get out of. You've seen it with like Walton and Hersham. Once you get promoted out of this league we're in, then you kind of keep going up. It's kind of like momentum. For some reason, I know they've changed the form um, how many teams get promoted this year, but last year it was only one automatic and then one through like a playoff. And I just think of all the hard work that the team's been through and Gary and the assistants, then it'd be great to get promoted. Um, if a Marathi call-up came, that would be obviously amazing, um, representing the island that you're in would be great. And yeah, so I would, I would, yeah, it'd be amazing to do that. Uh, as I'm getting older, though, I would say the buzz to try out, like, do triathlons properly and like do running events. So, like, I think if I focused on maybe like long distance running, I could do quite well in that and take the shift away from like sprinting. Uh, so, who knows? So, maybe like a slow shift from like kind of like the high intensity football to uh triathlon but one thing i would i've always said to myself it would be great to get jersey promoted one because i think of all the hard work that we've been through for the last two years year especially and second it would be a great achievement not many people can say you get promoted out of like these leagues yeah and i imagine the party would also be very good (laughs) (laughs) absolutely so yeah uh but yeah it's, it's a it's a hard question because you like things are always changing. I never thought I'd, I never thought this year, whether like this calendar year or whatever, I would do a marathon. I didn't think I had, it was impossible, but then I realised it's all in the like. I'm sure you know this with long distance. It's all in the mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, a lot. I, I must admit, a lot depends on like work situations. Um, yeah, because I've yeah. Who knows what happens with work and if I yeah. I don't want to say too much <laughs> with regarding work, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you for coming on today, Frank. That's all the questions I've got. Uh, it's a good insight into both Jersey and Guernsey football as well as different sports, so thank you. No, it's, it's been great. I know we've said this now for a number of months to do it. Um, one, like The transition I did think would be hard, but some of the friends I've met from both islands and how welcoming people in Jersey have been, especially in the football team, have been great. And now, like, I never would have thought you'd be like, wow, yeah, just, they're like good, proper friends now, which is just great. And uh, everyone's very welcome. So, yeah, couldn't pull it any better. Brilliant, brilliant. Cheers for coming on, Frank. No, no, no. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers. That was another episode of Sportscast Jersey. Uh, a new episode is coming soon.